You're listening to a special preview of the Holly Hour with Holly Signorelli, coming soon to the Real News Communications Network. Hello, everyone. It's Holly, the money therapist, and I am super excited to have a discussion with Jason Troy. We are talking about women in the workforce and how it's changing the dynamic at the office and at home. So, Jason, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your your website. I love your your message. Yes, I'm Jason Troy. I'm a business and executive coach, and my website is beextraordinary.tv. And I wrote a book called Social Wealth, and it's been a bestseller on how to build personal and professional relationships. And relationships are a true wealth, so I think that's what we're going to talk about today, and it's really important. And women today have a whole different dynamic here with men, and so I think having that conversation around that's really illuminating for people to talk about. Yes. I see this all the time in my practice. It's interesting because my practice basically is a representation of the country. So back in 99, when I started my company, I was working with mostly males because mostly males owned businesses. But now the demographics change. So about 42% of women now are female breadwinners, either at an executive job or running a business. And I'm seeing a really... A bad trend, which is that they are all stressed out. Most women that are running a business are still doing everything at home. Yeah, I think that's really interesting to talk about because I find I have clients of mine who they don't have boundaries. And so what happens is, is they get out of work and they go home and they take this masculine energy and they go home with their husband and they get in a lot of conflicts. And so what I've suggested a while ago is have goddess hour where when they go home, they take an hour and no one bothers them. And they do whatever they want, right? They could do yoga, they could go work out, they could go read, but it's important for them to de-stress and really take care of themselves and think about what's going on. And I found that when that happens, like 90% of the arguments and problems go way down. And mommy has a lot more to give her husband and the kids than the hour that she would have used anyways. Exactly. I've done quite a few videos on that. And also, I, I love the goddess hour. I wish I had come up with that. But like, take a bubble bath, take a break. When I grew up, my father, we had four kids and we had a bunch of foster kids. So there was always a fifth kid in the family. So you can imagine (laughs) with the chaos going on there. He would come home and he would literally not say a word to any of us. He would go straight back to the bedroom for about 30 minutes. But that was our normal. And then guess what? We had his undivided attention all night long. And I just thought that was the way it was supposed to be. But people don't do that. They come home. And then they immediately, especially women, they think I'm supposed to make dinner, I'm supposed to clean the house, I'm supposed to take care of the kids. But it's not like that anymore. It shouldn't be. Because if both people are working, then they should be co-parenting and taking care of the house together. I think they also can outsource things. I have friends who have agreements at a certain amount of money that they'll outsource it, whether it's $50 or $100, so they don't have to do the work. Right. And that eliminates a lot of stress and a lot of problems of who has to do what. Because if you have people that are working late, well, that stresses them out to come home and have to do more work at home and the work, and they don't spend time with each other. Right. And at the day, having a relationship with people is about time being spent. It is quality time, but if you don't have any time to spend, or you're really stressed out, or you're really worried about what's going to happen tomorrow in your job, you're not even present, and you're not yeah, really you're showing up. Yeah, you're thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So you have to find ways to eliminate a lot of things that you're doing, especially if you want to be successful in your career. Yeah, I find that too, and um, this isn't every woman, but a lot of women don't have assistance. I, I think it's the same thing as feeling like It's just the emotional component of who women are. So they're like, okay, I don't need help. I can do this by myself. And then again, they're just pulling their hair out. And I think a lot of this comes down to boundaries. Mm -hmm. Like you're not setting proper boundaries and getting your priorities straight. And so then things are really hard are the things you don't want to do. Right. And then you disassociate from the problems in your life by doing anything else that's probably negative behaviors in your own relationships in your own life. Yeah. So you've got to start setting boundaries with what you're going to do and what you're not you're going to do and then hold those boundaries because you can't do that in any relationship. Otherwise, you won't have a healthy one. Exactly. And it's okay to say no or not right now. You know, I can do that for you next Tuesday. And a lot of times people, they just don't do that and they, they feel guilty about it. So, you know, do you experience a lot of guilt with your clients? People do because they always want to do more. I think this perfectionism mentality, realizing that 
all you can do is what you can do and you've got to have priorities and you yeah. have to let things go and you got to be able to say no and be okay with it. Right. And if you can't say no, it means you're outsourcing your power. You're get, asking other people to give you permission to live your own life. And that becomes a problem I see over and over and over again with clients, other people. In fact, I have a client now who's been in, in an unhappy marriage for eight years because wow. she's been outsourcing her power because her husband's introvert and has some mental illnesses as, as well. And she's just not claiming the power. And so she's allowing him to dictate and her, she has to be very reactive. So she's highly stressed, right? just stressed out. And she's at a very high level executive job and it's been causing all these problems. And immediately when she took her power back, had boundaries and started being proactive in a few weeks, her whole life turned around. So it's really important to realize how important boundaries are in your life, Yeah. And, but you have to hold them. Like a lot of yes. people, give boundaries and they let people oh you don't really need to hold that one right. well then no one's going to hold anything because they don't believe you when you say it exactly yeah that's amazing and you know what about people that don't have families you know what what's going on with the dynamic out there because what i'm seeing is kind of a similar thing when it comes to dating um i feel like the millennials they treat everybody kind of equally like there's not this expectation that the man has to pay all the time because both men and women are working what do you see well i see interesting information some of the data on the figures of men and women because what you're finding now is more men or women are graduating from college than men at a rate of four to three so it's pretty pronounced and you're seeing in schools like baylor there are 60 percent women and 40 percent men and what you're finding is there's a lot more sex and a lot less relationship going on <laughs> and i think Think you're seeing that going up and also women who have college educations don't want to date down with men who don't have it and so you're seeing a whole sea change going out there and i think on top of it people in the workforce want to have a purpose they want to know that they're doing something right. that is actually valuable and not just making a buck and i think all of this stuff is making it really confusing out there in a minefield that's going on and men also are outsourcing their power a lot of times because now women are making more than them they have better jobs and higher status and men are having a problem with dealing with that as well and so that all is really causing a lot of confusion out there for people. Yeah, that's an interesting subject to me because I was lucky enough to marry the perfect man. But before that, I was either with somebody that was really, really wealthy or just made a lot less than me. And that's never mattered to me because I do what I do because I love doing what I do. So to me, whether the person I'm with makes more money or less is irrelevant, but it does seem to trigger something in the male ego. Because insecurity. Yeah. Right. And that goes down to feeling either guilt or shame. And guilt is I'm doing something wrong and shame I am bad. And that has a lot to do with it. And that's a lot of shaming that goes on in relationships between people. Because if you call someone a liar in a relationship, you're saying that they are one. That's who they are as a person. Right. Not that they lied about something. And so the verbiage and how we use it is really interesting. And then you're also seeing a dynamic where if a man makes less than a woman, he's got to be vulnerable, but the woman has to be as well. Because a lot of women say that they want a man to be vulnerable, but then when they do, it's a show of weakness. And right. therefore, they, they pat it right back down. They say, no, don't tell me this. So I think the dynamic there is more communication and all comes back to our own blind spots. And when we don't take time to figure out what our blind spots are and what are the patterns that have been holding us back our whole life, they continue to haunt us until they finally bring us to our knees or we have some huge event in our life. That's why you see people who have like cancer or some life-threatening event have this massive change in their life. Right. It's because they're forced to look at these things for the first time in their life and actually take action on them. You know, it's the same way with money because in my practice, and the reason I wrote my book about the nine emotions is that I noticed that people of all income levels did the same things and they're self-sabotaging mechanisms. Yes. And when the economy was really bad and then started to turn around, people that were making a lot of money were blowing through it. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it wasn't like somebody at a lower income that finally got a little bit of money and wanted to go out and have a nice dinner. I'm talking about people that had plenty to save and to, um, to give, but they just it was like they thought they were never going to have money again yeah, yeah i think you're seeing that with people because they're disassociating from their own life they don't yeah. have a purpose internal to them right it's something external to them which is always something that causes problems right if your purpose in your life is your job or your business 
or even another person, eventually everything external to you will let you down. Right. And you keep serving up money to put in its place, right? Because we live in a society where it's like, take a pill, yeah. right? Buy this and you're going to feel better. Don't feel your emotions, right? And you've got to feel your emotions and really understand where they are and what's going on that's actually bringing all these things up. And that makes every single person have to do work on themselves. It's not, that's just not women, that's men too. And we don't start doing that, it causes a lot of challenges. Yeah, definitely. I see the self-sabotaging mechanisms, you know, that's with, with anybody, you're right. They just replay the roles over and over again and they don't even know it. It's like so ingrained. It was interesting what you were saying earlier about the colleges though. So the, the there's more females going to college now. So that's yes. really changing the millennials and how they relate to probably money as well as of course the dating and, and how they're gonna get married. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens over the next decade. It really will. And it, and that's not going to stop because what you saw back is when the pill came out and Title IX and a lot of other stuff, you started to see the graduation rates go up and men were graduating less. And so there's really no indication that that's going to stop. It looks like it's flatlining a little bit, but it's yeah. a pretty significant change that's going on in our culture overall. And I yeah, think it's, it's like important. a switch. It's like a shift. Yeah, It's a, it's a it's, massive shift going yes. on. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'm really excited to see what happens over the next decade because hopefully it'll all level out and then everybody will just be kind of one-on-one and, and not this, uh, uh, you know, major dis- in dis- or discrepancy <laughs> between the two. Yes, so you're seeing stuff on emotional intelligence come out too where you're seeing women are better in the workforce because they can relate emotionally and that's really the signs of a leader. What they've shown is, one, how much uncertainty you can live in and two, it's your emotional awareness of yourself and other people. And those are the yeah. two things that they're showing in studies that are the biggest proponent of showing how high you're gonna go up, how much money you're gonna make, and what really the quality of your leadership overall. Wow, well thank you so much, Jason, for being here today. This is exciting information. And Jason Troy, TV. Yes. Find out more. And I'm Holly, the money therapist at themoneytherapist.com. Have a great one. The Holly Hour with Holly Signorelli, coming soon to the Real News Communications Network. 